Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. On Sunday, soldiers at uh, several army bases across the West African nation of Burkina Faso rebelled, demanding the sacking of the military top brass and more resources to fight a bloody jihadist insurgency in the country. Later in the day, gunshots were heard near the private residence uh, of the president in the capital, Ouagadougou, and witnesses reported seeing a helicopter hovering above it. Well, on Monday, those mutinous troops arrested President Christian Kabore and detained him in the army barracks. And later that day, the soldiers went live on national television to announce that they had deposed President Rosh Kabore, uh, suspended the constitution, dissolved the government, and the National Assembly and closed the country's borders. The announcement signed by Paul Henri Asanda Ogo Damiba and Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Colonel and read by another officer, Sitsore Kedar Wedrago, on state television said the takeover had been carried out without violence and those detained were in a secure location. Now, this is the third military takeover in the West African sub-region in the last 18 months. Why? Now, to help us answer this and other questions, let's say good morning to Apolli Jime, who is a global affairs analyst, and he joins us this morning on The Breakfast. Uh, Mr. Jime, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let, let's start with the first question. Uh, why? Why are we having um, a repeated incidences of coups in West Africa? We had Mali, we had Guinea, and now we have Burkina Faso. What's going on? I will probably have more. Uh, it's not a good um, uh, prophecy or prediction, but it's, it's really predictable the way things are going. It is a lack of, um, you know, good governance, uh, or if you like, poor governance, and the fact that um, what now matters to politicians is themselves, not the people. And the fact that um, uh, the, 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 the population also has um, a blame here, uh, because um, the recruitment system, the politicians have um, studied and uh, maybe found a way out of the structures of the democracy and are now using using them to either gain power or perpetrate themselves in power. They, they fiddle with the constitution, they conduct flawed elections, and then they, they abuse human rights. Uh, these are the um, uh, triggers and um, drivers of um, this um, uh, incursion. And then I think uh, West Africa should be um, uh, really careful that um, we, at the end of uh, this year, uh, will not end up with having half of uh, the ECOWAS member states being governed by the military. Military has no place in the, in, 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 they are not wired to govern. But the point is that each time you find these politicians, um, uh, doing unconstitutional uh, acts, and then the civilians come on the on the streets. They use this uh, military to suppress them, and then the military now, well, they say, well, since they have the um, uh, the uh, instrumentality, the power of question, they can now rise up and say, well, listen, you get out. But that is not to say that they have done a very good job of it, because that is not their their remit. That is not their mandate. It is to protect uh, the country and protect the citizens. But the politicians are not doing this, are not doing that, um, having the, the so-called mandate of the people. So questions should be asked, how did we, we have now given you the, the um, uh, background to how we got, there, got here, how do we get out? I think um, we will answer that as we go on in this program. All right. Are we moving forward or backward in Africa? I mean, you're looking at the fact that we've had several coups over the past years. It would have been thought that democracy, you know, was gaining a foothold in Africa. You've had, you know, elections in stable uh, countries, even with those that have dictatorships like Togo. They've been stable over the past years, like, like Cameroon have been stable over the past years. And one would have thought that Africa was, had moved on from the 90s, the 80s, and the 70s, where um, coups were the order of the day. We look at What's been happening since 2017 in Zimbabwe? There was a guard, what do you call it, guardian coup in in November 2017. In April 2019, Sudan had a coup. In August 2020, there was a coup in Mali. In April 2021, uh, there was a Chadian covert coup. In May 2021, another coup in Mali. September 2021, a coup in Guinea. 
October 2021, another coup in Sudan. And now we're here in Burkina Faso. Are, are we going back to the 70s, 80s, like 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s? Well, I like your the, your chronology. And uh, it couldn't have been, you know, it's very factual. And then it's there for everyone to see. So what is there, what I can say is that it appears uh, there is retrogression uh, in democracy. And, but democracy is not the, the question. It is the practitioners, the, the politicians, who have now found a way around it, using, like I said, the structures and the institutions of uh, democracy to now, you know, do their own bidding and um, not governing. They are now, uh, they are not serving. They want, now want to be um, uh, served. But leadership is stubborn. So it is lack of leadership. It is, uh, you know, that debt of leader is causing all this. And um, so the people will now have to take power from this because power is given to this. They are elected to serve the people. They are they're holding power in trust. But what they are doing, they are no, it's not in trust. They are actually uh, dominating and then um, uh, lording it over the people. And that is why the, 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 the civil society and the citizens, before you now vote, you have to look at the credentials of people you are putting in power. Uh, money plays a, a big role and uh, coercion, like I said. They use this military that have now found a way of saying, no, listen, uh, uh, for instance, where was it? Somebody who was, uh, you saw him holding the umbrella for one of the heads of state, but later became the one who took over from him. That is in Guinea. So it will continue unless and until um, African um, uh, leaders learn to govern. Uh, people in Africa, the, the electorate, hold their, their leaders to, to, to account. Because that is not happening. Instead, at times they are clapping for them, or they will be the ones to go and um, vote uh, when they have referendum to change constitutions. And suddenly, and then you see when the military takes over, uh, the, you know, there is a jubilation. But that is uh, that that honeymoon does not last because the military, when having tested power, they also want to perpetrate themselves, and so they have not. Uh, that is not their role. But what do you do? If you make a peaceful change uh, uh, impossible, then you have to go for uh, violence. So the politicians, the leadership, it is that deficit of leadership it is that um, uh, uh, that is happening. That is what is causing all this. And I think um, Africa should go back to the drawing board. This idea of one step forward and then uh, so many steps uh, backwards cannot consolidate democracy. Okay. And so ECOWAS, um, um, AU, Everybody, they have a long, a, a long way. They are not playing their role like in the past. You mentioned seventies, eighties, and people of uh, when you were having two governments, one in the bush and one in the city. Is that where we are going? But they know why we are we are there. When these um, uh, politicians are doing what they are doing, their colleagues are not called them to order. For instance, the coup in uh, Burkina Faso. You, nobody will tell me that it uh, it came out of the blue. No. Because for several months, people have been on the streets protesting. And so now so, so it, br it, brings me, it brings me back to, I mean, right there immediately. But um, I'm sorry that I have to interject so we can actually share your thoughts on this one. Um, some people are already saying that maybe, you know, military governments are right uh, the way forward for Africa as it is. Because just like you were mentioning that uh, Burkina Faso didn't just happen. You had the fact that civilians, including the military, crying out about, you know, the going, all of the um, ills that's going on, especially the fact that the government could not tackle the issue of Islamic insurgents at the time that destabilized the government. And with other countries, uh, you know, in the region that experienced the coup, um, this has always been the case. So, and in Nigeria as well, you also have a lot of people who will be saying, maybe we should go back to the military. So the question now is, do you think that the military is the way forward for Africans? No. I mean, that will be, because you will notice that the military also organized schools against, state schools against themselves. So if, if they were uh, wonderful, um, you will think that uh, they will bring um, the Eldorado that people want. But how can we be thinking like, um, you know, as if we are going back to the uh, Stone Age? Are we now uh, uh, early man, the key man? When the rest of the world are moving towards uh, development, they are moving towards um, uh, digital life. Uh, you know, how can the military? Military is not wired. They cannot. 
It is not their role. So it is that um, the politicians are not providing them with the excuse. But that is why I say, well, the solution is for the people to take back back power. You know, they cannot kill everybody. The military. You saw what we you are seeing. What is uh, uh, unraveling in Miami? Let them kill. They can, people, the, the um, civilians or the electorate are becoming too comfortable. They don't want to die. Father will say it. My mother is there. My father is there. My child is there. But you have to sacrifice. Freedom can never be given. You have to take it. Rights. Your right is to be taken. Not to, to fight for it. Nobody can surrender their right. The politicians are enjoying themselves. They don't want to leave power. That is why they have this issue of elongation. That is why they rig uh, elections to, to remain in power. And then because they are enjoying it. But that is not the way. They are not serving the people. African leaders are not leading. The um, AU, African uh, Union, is not doing its job like uh, the Organization of African Unity. And then the re uh, regional economic communities like ECOWAS, they have now fallen back. They are losing steam. They are no longer doing what they are supposed to do. You, you know, there are instruments that they can use to call, uh, just like they are now condemning political uh, uh, military coups, there are instruments that says that you have to respect the constitution. You have to respect the rights of the people. You have to respect, uh, uh, you know, rule of law. But they are not addressing that. All they are saying is once the military, the same military that they use, to, they appoint, in any case, they appoint uh, the military hierarchy. And they cannot rule without, you know, they have the, there is a um, marriage you know, of inconvenience between uh, uh, between the two of them, the military and the politicians. But now, when one sees that uh, they are not getting what they want, the people become the victim. Let people rise. For instance, the, in uh, Burkina Faso, what has um, heightened the thing was civilians were being killed by by these uh, insurgents, and suddenly. Soldiers were, were involved, scores of soldiers. Recently, about 20 soldiers were, were killed. And they're telling President Kabore, do something. And he rode on that to, to gain power, to be elected in 2015. Now he cannot do anything. Just like Keita in, um, in Mali, he has said that he will fight um, ter terrorism. They never do that. Instead, they will use the weapons that uh, uh, were donated by uh, partners to go and be uh, terrorizing and um, oppressing the civilians. And then civilians, they don't have arms. They don't have the question, that instrument. It's the military that has it. That is why it appears that it's the military. In some senses, the military is uh, venting, the uh, elevating the, the anger, uh, the frustration of the, of the people. But their own is also that they overdo it. They, they, some of them are adventurists. They want to, to, to get power. Uh, very young uh, people, but they need to be guided, to be told that they have position. They are citizens, by the way, but every citizen, everybody, you have your your role to play in society. Okay, that is why a carpenter cannot do the job of uh, an elect electrician or engineer. Okay, yeah, but, but, but let, me take, let me take you back again, because I remember when we had this conversation of recent, uh, when we're talking about the Malian coup, and you said that uh, the community, especially the ECOWAS community, had not moved swiftly, because they probably would have you know, moved with the sanctions. And now we have seen that uh, Mali had been sanctioned. But it doesn't really change anything. One would think that that would be um, a deterrent, you know, to other countries and maybe the juntas in other countries to, you know, take a lesson from there. But it feels like um, um, this sanctions from ECOWAS doesn't really hold way. I mean, it's not effective. Yeah, I, I can't remember saying that, um, you know, it is sanctions. It, it, sanctions alone can do it. What I'm saying is for them to play by the rule. Because the politicians, they are the, partly the reason, the cause for this, by their conduct, by their uh, body language, and then by what they do. And people are listening to them. People are watching them. You cannot go and uh, uh, change the constitution illegally to give yourself a power, to gain power or perpetuate yourself, or rig elections, and, and or begin to disrespect um, uh, the, the rights of... Uh, so many people are, are, they are not obeying human rights or, or respecting human rights. Many people are in jail. For instance, in Benin, a woman is in jail uh, because she, she dared to... Con 
contest uh, the presidential election. Now they have thrown her in jail, citing um, uh, terrorism because of uh, uh, charges of terrorism. And nobody is saying anything there. When um, um, uh, 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 Conde was sending the constitution in, in Mali, uh, you know, in, in Guinea, nobody said anything. When um, uh, Keita was... Uh, you know, oppressing his people and be coming too hard on them because he fails to deliver on a um, uh, security issue. Nobody talks. It was now when the civilians were on the street. You will always see this, that civilians, at times they do their beats, but because they are, they are, they are powerless, they don't have their weapons. So that is why it appears. But this same uh, Burkina Faso was the place where Civilians came on the street about uh, uh, two million of them in 2014 to um, force of um, from office Blaise Campari. You remember him, the man who has now been um, implicated in the killing of his friend in the coup of 1987, um, uh, Thomas Sankara. And they are now trying to begin a, a trial for, 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 for Campari. It is not unlikely that uh, Campari uh, supporters are, who do not want um, the, his trial could be part of the elements that are uh, working to stop that trial. It is not impossible. But the whole book stops at the level of uh, leadership. It is the lack of leadership. Because if you wanted to make a match, if you're visionary, your revolutionary in your thinking, and then um, you have the, the interests of the people at heart, you, you move above beyond your own personal interests. To talk about, you know, the collective. The African leaders are not thinking about collective. They are thinking about self and their families and their friends. That is the difference. But you are given the mandate to govern for the whole people. You well, become the president or yeah. prime minister for so, the whole nation. So, so you've made a point. Sorry to interrupt you, sir, but you, you've made a point, you know, that the African Union, the um, economic community of African states, and basically the, the leaders of, on the continent should not just only stand up to condemn, you know, coups and to place sanctions on nations where you have coups, but should also advise their peers when they're going wrong. You know, but what some people have said, you know, we, these coups, no matter how well-intentioned they are, no matter how many people are crying on the streets, because you will agree that even though you have people protesting against the governments in these West African countries, including Burkina Faso, those in power also have their supporters who can also go on the streets. But some have said that the worst um, democracy is better than the best military rule or the best military intervention. And the best way to solve this out is either through people power or through the ballot box. Let's, let's go back to uh, Mali, where you talked about uh, uh, the removal of Keita. We can see that these guys came in in May 2021. And um, till to date, we don't know what's happening with the elections in that country. They've suspended or extended the elections uh, through it five years down the road, five years, you know, and um, of course brought in the Wagner Group uh, Russian private military uh, force um, into that country. Um, so shouldn't we be doing everything we can, whether the, the, the civilians are doing well or not, to still condemn and reject and, and, and dissuade military intervention in our democracy in West Africa? Yes, I agree with you. Condemn, but after condemnation, what follows? You know, you mentioned the fact that um, in Mali, look at what is happening. In fact, actually, it was through tw uh, 2020 that these people, the um, uh, Goita people, took over and then organized another coup in um, uh, August of 2021. So they have, they are what you call bad faith actors. They came there, they haven't done anything for the past 16 months. And that is part of the problem. But now, ECOWAS has. Um, a, a body made up, you know, 15, now they, they have uh, um, suspended um, two. Maybe they will also add the uh, Burkina Faso to the list. But that is not the issue. Sanctions or suspension, what next? You now have to negotiate with these people to bring them to the table and tell them, you know, it's like a child that is misbehaving in the family. What do you do? Do you kill the child? Or do you, um, you know, isolate them or, uh, you know, send them away? You, as a, as a, as statesmen, you, but because these, these statesmen have not acted in good faith, 
you mentioned Wagner. What business is it of anybody to begin to meddle in? Nigeria, at one point, um, asked um, uh, Chad to help. The Italian leader, uh, Idris Deby, was pushing um, um, Boko Haram and everybody from his own territory to Nigerian territory. It is not there. By the way, we have also to talk about the influence external um, factors. France has not conducted in, in itself in, uh, in glory in its former uh, 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 colonies in, in, in West Africa, in Africa. So that is part of the problem. It is France that is pushing this issue of uh, uh, Wagner because Russia, and now they want to dominate. He wants to continue to dominate his former uh, colonies in Africa. That is why it is against any other country coming in. You know, but uh, that is their own um, inter national interest. But why should Africans now, Africans are supposed to be independent. Why should they go as, for instance, be hammering on uh, the fact that Mali, if my, my, uh, France says, France has been there since 2013, and then there is a UN uh, uh, peacekeeping force of about 15,000. France has about 5,000. 5, they have not been able to end the insecurity in Mali. And the Malians are now saying, listen, let us try. By the way, France says they are drawing down on the 5,000 that they have. Uh, plus the fact that uh, 15,000 from uh, uh, MINUSMA or from the UN have not been effective. And this guy said, okay, let us go to another country to help us. So what is it, uh, where, where in the Constitution, okay. where in, in the International Charter does it say okay. that you cannot conduct your, your bilateral relations with any other country? So it is that pandering to external forces mm. that has put Africa, AU, and the COAS in this mess. We, we have to go, Mr. Paul and Jimmy, we have yes. to go. Uh, very, just in one sentence, what's your take on the uh, increasing uh, jihadist and insurgency threat uh, across the northern parts of several West African countries. Uh, Chad, they have had an experience. Nigeria is having its experience. In Mali, they've had an insurgency for, for donkey years now up north. And we're hearing also Burkina Faso. And these are also linked to the coups. What's your take on this growing uh, uh, sort of jihadist insurgency sweeping across West Africa? Well, so we have to look at the cause um, uh, or the causes. Some of them are political. Others are, you know, the fact that um, they eliminated uh, Gaddafi in Libya, and that has created um, a window for all these uh, armed groups to to coalesce and then um, uh, mobilize. The issue also, they, they talk about there are factors that are responsible. It could be political, it could be um, exclusion, it could be um, economic. So let African governments come as a collective partnership. Terrorism, you can't fight it alone. Come as a group and then decide. But by the way, make sure that in, individually in your countries, you are not promoting or inadvertently promoting this type of uh, uh, insurrection or, you know, uh, 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 hatred, or all kinds of things. Okay. Governance is about the the, um, the welfare of the people. If you know the factors that are giving rise to his direction, and then go and address it all right. meaningfully, faithfully, and then um, uh, honestly. Thank you very much. Uh, Apollo Jimmy is a global affairs analyst, and he's been uh, giving us some very, very uh, interesting and intelligent analysis on the unfolding events in the West African nation of Burkina Faso following uh, that coup d'etat there. Mercy. Well, thank you so thank much. you for having me. Thank you, uh, Paul Ajime, for coming. Uh, we do appreciate your time, and we look forward to having this conversation as we proceed. Well, we will actually take a break. When we come back, we will be looking at the suspension of uh, the subsidy by the federal government and the implication for the PIB, PIA. Stay tuned.